So, as you know, simple uh, Patankar proposed simple in 1970, but he proposed it on a staggered mesh, and staggered mesh was originally proposed by Harlow back in 1956. Okay, so pretty much from 1956 to until the point Quim was first proposed, people were doing solutions of Navier-Stokes on staggered mesh. Of course, there was no no dearth of effort in trying to get it for a co-located mesh, but nobody could come up with the formulation, okay? So the first formulation, <clears throat> now of course, it's not just pressure-based solvers which encountered this. Density-based people were also encountering the same issue, okay? It's not that just because you're solving the equations in a coupled manner in a density-based method that the problem will go away. You will still encounter the same problem. The fact that the continuity equation, if you do distance-weighted interpolation, allows multiple solutions. That's not going to go away, no matter which formulation you use. Okay, So density-based uh, formulation people who were using density-based methods were also encountering the same problem. Okay, So the entire CFD community was encountering this problem. All right? And in 1983, these two guys, they, are, they were actually from um, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, um, who came up with this method called pressure-weighted interpolation method. And it was almost, uh, I mean, this paper, here's the reference, sorry. Here's the reference. You can see this was published in the AIAA journal. It wasn't even published in... Now, of course, you know, AIAA Journal publishes all sorts of papers, okay, not necessarily just CFD papers, okay. They even publish experimental papers. So this, this paper was sort of, it was published like, you know, no one even noticed it initially because it was published in the AIAA Journal, not in a computational journal like the Journal of Computational Physics or International Journal for Numerical Methods in Fluids. Uh, you know, s the standard journals that people publish c CFD stuff on, none of those journals. It was kind of hidden. And if you look at the title of the paper, it doesn't say anything about, you know, a special treatment of uh, pressure velocity coupling or anything like that. Numerical study of a turbulent flow past an airfoil. Okay, I mean, you would think that, okay, it's just an application paper. But... Really, if you read it carefully, it's not an application paper. It's a fundamentals paper. It's a methods paper, okay? And this second last statement of the abstract clearly says that. It says, instead of the, he says, says it in a very matter-of-fact way, okay? But, I mean, that obviously is very, very important. He says, instead of the staggered grid, an ordinary grid system is employed for the computation and a specific scheme is developed to suppress the pressure oscillations. Okay, so in that one sentence, he basically tells you that this is new. Okay. All right, so by the way, this scheme is, in today's literature, is also known as the Reachow inter interpolation scheme. Okay, that's what many people refer to it as, nothing else. They don't call it PUIM or anything, they just call it the Reachow scheme. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Now, of course, there have been many alternative formulations of PUIM that have been tried since 1983. One of the more popular ones is a method called momentum-weighted interpolation method, which is similar, but um, in fact, you know, if you read the CFD literature, some people call PUIM, they say pressure-weighted interpolation method is actually a momentum-weighted interpolation method, and there are reasons. We'll get into that down the road, okay? Uh, but there is another uh, method called the momentum weighted interpolation method. By the way, that's not me. Uh, that's a guy who um, he's pretty famous in the CFD area. Uh, he's from University of Karlsruhe in Germany. <laughs> okay. Um, so he proposed uh, this so-called MWIM method, which is also used quite a lot, especially in uh, in areas related to. Uh, you know, civil engineering, hydrodynamics, water flow around ships, and things like that, okay, where body forces are very, very important. <clears throat> so MWIM has been found to be more effective than PUIM in flows with strong hydro hydrostatic pressure effects, okay? <clears throat> but most commercial CFD codes today use PUIM, and they use a slightly refined version of, of that, 
okay? As I said, the original paper was not a methods paper, so he didn't explain things very well, okay? So later on, people, of course, read the paper and went into in-depth into the mathematics and the derivations and everything, that where did he get these formulas from and so on. And um, Tim Miller and Frank Schmidt um, at Penn State, they actually published this paper, which clearly you can see is it's in a numerical methods journal, and also it, the title clearly says what they're trying to do, use of the pressure-weighted interpolation method for solution of the incompressible Navier Stokes equation on non-staggered grid systems. Okay. Uh, Tim Miller, by the way, is the guy I learned my CFD from. Um, he's still at the Applied Research Lab, which is a Navy lab uh, housed within Penn State. <clears throat> So this is the method we are going to talk about um, in the next several slides, okay? Any questions so far? <clears throat> All right, so I said there is a typo here as well, and I've fixed it already. You can see here, this is in your notes probably, There's that's a delta Y, so change that to <clears throat> delta X, okay? And then this one I've already fixed. Um, I think I think it was correct in the notes already. Okay. So those are our link coefficients. Now remember, these link coefficients have nothing to do whether to do with whether it's a staggered mesh or a collocated mesh. The staggered versus collocation comes in when you actually write the phase velocities in terms of cell center velocities. That's where it comes in. Okay, the interpolation changes. But these equations are general finite volume equations that you would get whether you use a staggered mesh or a collocated mesh. Okay, so keep that in mind. So nothing changes there because we are still using phase velocities, phase pressures in this uh, formulation here. So for both momentum equations, the link coefficients are the same. So therefore, no superscripts are necessary, and as you can see, I've removed the superscripts x and y, okay, from the link coefficients, because both will have the same link coefficients. Now, the interpolation of the variables will be identical for x and y momentum, because it's a collocated mesh, okay? Phase values of density and viscosity, the same intuitive, I'm calling it, interpolation is used, which means basically it's a two-point interpolation. Okay, so north will be capital north plus north divided by two. South will be capital south plus north divided by two and so on. You don't even have to draw a picture to figure out what to do. Okay, it's pretty obvious. <clears throat> so let's go over now the derivation of the simple algorithm. And like I did for staggered mesh, I'm going to kind of digress and go through derivations and then put it all together finally. Okay. Now, you already know the simple algorithm by this time, so that the overall algorithm is not going to change. Only certain steps are going to change. So step one, just like before, is you start with your guess of U, V, and P at all cell centers. Okay? Remember, now these cell centers are co-located. Okay? So we are calling, we are um, using the superscript with parenthesis, with K within parenthesis for outer iteration index. Okay? Step two is you need to calculate phase velocities from cell center velocities. Why? Because phase velocities are needed to calculate link coefficients. If you go back to the previous slide, right here, you have all phase velocities in your link coefficients. Okay? So we don't need those velocities right away to calculate your link coefficients before you can solve anything. Okay? So this is where we start. Um, thinking about these things. We have already said that distance-weighted interpolation cannot be used for this purpose. What do we do then? Okay. When we enter the algorithm, the very first outer iteration, we still use distance-weighted interpolation because the pressure field at this point is a guess, right? And therefore, we are saying it's dangerous to use it, use this PWIM formula that we will derive later on. Okay. I haven't derived it, but I'm saying for the very first iteration, don't even bother about using pressure-weighted interpolation. Just use your simple, you know, distance-weighted interpolation like you always do. Because you need something to calculate your link coefficients the very first time. So all we are saying is 
okay? Now, if you set your velocities uniform everywhere, let's say, then you don't even need an interpolation, okay? You just use that value for your... Now, this is just for the first outer iteration, k equal to 1, to get things started, okay? And down the road, you will see we will modify the algorithm where we will actually calculate the phase velocities and store them. And then in subsequent iterations, k equal to 2, those phase velocities that you've calculated and stored will be used for your link coefficients. Okay? Everybody clear on that? So that's how you get started. So this is step two continued, this step. I'm just writing it out mathematically. I'm saying, okay, use the standard distance-weighted interpolation the very first time. Note that unlike in a staggered mesh, the same interpolation scheme applies to U, V, and also density, okay? Because it's a collocated mesh. Again, you don't have to worry about um, doing it separately. All right, next step is, as you know, you have to calculate your link coefficients for the X and Y momentum equations, okay? Because you're getting ready to solve your momentum equation, so you have to calculate your link coefficients. Formulas are already outlined two slides ago, so you simply use those formulas. It's the same thing as uh, staggered mesh, okay? Then you calculate your pressure sources for the momentum equation. Okay, so here is your standard pressure source. Now, here is another change that's coming into place for a co-located mesh. When you had a staggered mesh, these face pressures for the momentum control volume were actually nodal values because what you had was, here is your pressure control volume and here is your momentum control volume. So the face pressures, that means this one and this one, as you can see, already has cell centers for the green control volume sitting there. So all we did was in a staggered mesh, we replaced the west, this guy, by P0, and the east by, um, or sorry, the west by P west and the east by P0. Okay? But now we can't do that because it's not staggered anymore. So therefore, we also have to use interpolation for pressure. And typically for that, we use distance-weighted interpolation. Okay, so no change there, standard distance-weighted interpolation. So P West becomes P naught plus P capital West divided by two, and P East becomes P naught plus P East divided by two. Okay, if you uh, simplify it, obviously it becomes that. Okay, so that's one change um, clearly from staggered mesh. Similarly, for the Y momentum equation, your source term will be um, by the same token half PS minus P naught times delta X. Okay, everybody with me so far? All right. Step four, predict a new velocity field, both U and V, by solving the two momentum equations. You know this already. This is your inner iteration, okay, where you're um, using ADI, and that gives you U hat and V hat. This is where you're going to solve the equations in correction form with inertial damping, okay? No change whatsoever to what you're doing for a staggered mesh. All right? And I've just reiterated what... We said for a staggered mesh, they're solved iteratively, inner iterations in correction form, solved to partial convergence. The only difference is now notice that you're not going from 2 to n and 1 to m for x momentum and something else for y momentum. It's the same. All your cells are basically, cell centers are interior. There is no boundary cell center, essentially. Okay, so you're going from one, 1 to n, 1 to m for all variables. That's your domain of solution. Okay. So we know already that this velocity field satisfies momentum conservation, but not mass conservation since it uses an old pressure field. So 
now going through the same derivation as we did for a staggered mesh. So this is basically the simple algorithm we are talking about. Uh, nothing has changed anymore. Only notice that here I have a factor of two because, you know, because of the way we wrote the pressure sources. We had half of south minus north and west minus east. Okay. But other than that, everything is the same. It's the momentum equation I have written by dividing through by the diagonal. Um, and also notice that I'm not using superscript X here and superscript Y here because those link coefficients are actually identical for the X and Y momentum equations. And this is where the whole idea of thinking about a passive scalar helps. See, when you're solving an advection diffusion equation, that phi that you're solving for can be anything. It can be the U velocity, it can be the V velocity, it can be temperature, whatever it is, okay? The link coefficients that you have multiplying them are identical for each conservation equation. There's no change whatsoever, okay? And that's why you don't need to change anything because, you know, you don't have a separate viscosity for the X momentum equation, Y momentum equation. So you don't need to change anything. Now, when you use similar things for the heat transfer, for heat transfer for the energy conservation equation, yes, your link coefficients will have certain changes, but it, the only thing is you will replace the viscosity by thermal diffusivity. That's it. Okay. The structure stays pretty much the same. Okay, <clears throat> so everybody clear on this? So this is the first step. Now what we do is, like we did, did for um, staggered mesh, the next step in the simple algorithm is to compute the mass imbalance for each cell and then solve the pressure correction equation. Because what we are going to do is, as you, re as you remember, the next step would be to write these double-hatted velocities with P k plus one, right? Subtract out the two, and then that will give, give, give us our velocity corrections. The velocity corrections, we plug it into the continuity equation, we get the pressure correction equation. And in the pressure correction equation, the right-hand side is the mass imbalance term. Now, to calculate that mass imbalance, we need our um, cell phase velocities. So this is where I'm going to digress a little bit and go into derivation. All right? <clears throat> because we are saying that we cannot use standard distance weighted interpolation for cell phase velocities, okay? <clears throat> so how do we do that? So this is completely new, so pay attention. This is not something we have talked about before. So here's our X momentum equation, equation 1X, which I had one slide ago. <clears throat> now what I've done here is, see this is equation 1X, this is for the cell naught, okay? I've written that same equation in the next slide for cell E, the eastern cell, okay? So all you need to do is you need to replace this by east, that by east, that by east, that by east, and then, you know, move these one grid point over so the west will become north and the east will become east-east, okay? And then this will again become east. Everything else stays the same. So it's almost as if you're writing the same equation for the next cell over, okay? That's what I've done here. And you can see you have P naught and P east east show up here, okay? And all of these guys have become east, okay? Now what we're doing is we're saying, okay, Let's imagine that we have a cell whose cell center is on the face, okay? This is a fictitious thing we are doing here, just for the purpose of derivation. So our grid is like this, right? We have not here, east here. We have written already two equations. One was equation 1x, which we wrote for cell naught, okay? We have written another equation equation 2x, which is for cell east. Now we are saying, let's pretend that right here, we have another cell center, okay? In other words, if we took the momentum equation and pretended that our momentum control volume was like that, we could have derived another equation and written it for that phase velocity east, okay? So you can kind of see where this is all coming from because people already had this idea of staggered mesh. 
So they're saying, okay, if the mesh was staggered, then we would actually have a control volume there and a corresponding discrete equation for that node. But now we don't, but we'll pretend as if it ex we can write one like that, okay? That's what this is. So you can see all these have now subscripts small e, and not only that, now I'm saying I'm going to use the pressure gradient across that face, which is simply going to be this minus that divided by delta x. So there is no factor of two in this equation anymore. Okay? Because we're looking at the pressure gradient across this fictitious control volume in a sense, and that will be simply P naught minus P east. Okay? No more two. So this is my equation 3x now. So we have three equations now, one for naught, one for east, and one for small east. Now, of course, if you think about it, these things here, this guy, that guy, that guy, none of these we know. We haven't calculated those. We have only calculated them at these cell centers, at the eastern cell center, at the, at the cell center naught, but not at the faces or the cell cent the fictitious cell centers at the faces. Okay? So somehow we have to approximate those guys to be able to use this equation. Okay? And this is where some approximations come in. And some of or two of the approximations that people typically make are they say, okay. The one over A naught at the eastern face, we are simply going to take the average of one over um, A naught at the eastern and one over A naught at the uh, node naught. Okay, so that's one. And then this term also, you do the same thing. You take a distance weighted average of uh, the two quantities, the same two quantities evaluated at the two nodes. Now, if you start thinking about it, these a naughts, these link coefficients, what do they have? If you think about advective links, they have rho times u, density times velocity, right? Which is basically mass flux. Uh, diffusive links have this gamma, right? So if I'm doing this kind of an interpolation with one over the link coefficients, it's like a weird combination of like transport resistance if you think about resistance, right, um, as opposed to conductance, when we add, for example, um, you know, two resistances in parallel, we do one over, right? So this is kind of like that. There's obviously the A naught has mass, but it's actually using inverse of the mass. And it turns out that this has something to do with interpolating pressure. Okay, we'll talk about that down the road, why it's called pressure weighted interpolation. Okay, but it's not a straightforward interpolation of velocity anymore. It's a weighted average kind of thing we are doing. Okay. Be that as it may, these are the two approximations that uh, Ri and Chao proposed. And once you do that, then all you have to do is you have to replace the corresponding terms in equation 3x, okay, which is this, by those two approximations that I've written down in 4x and 5x. Okay, which is what I've done here. I've replaced the first term by that, okay, and then the second term by that. <clears throat> so it's a substitution of 4x and 5x into 3x, okay. And now you rewrite these equations 1x and 2x. So we are going back to, here's your 1x, okay. This original momentum equation for node naught. Okay, and 2x was the original momentum equation for node east. We are simply rewriting them a slightly differently because we kind of, I want to kind of eliminate these terms. So I've written those terms in terms of everything else. Okay, it's just algebra. There's nothing fancy going on here. So I've replaced those or rewritten them and I'm calling them equation 7x. So now I'm going to take this right-hand side and this right-hand side and plug these two in here for those two, okay? And 
And once I do that, I get this. <clears throat> now notice that all of a sudden the pressure has shown up. Okay. And now if I simplify further, here is what I end up getting. Okay. After rearranging. And we revert back to derivatives. So what I've done here is just for the sake of uh, simplicity or, you know, understanding, instead of taking the discrete version of the pressure gradients like you have here, these are all pressure gradients essentially, right? I mean, you could write a delta x here and a delta x here to give you a pressure gradient right there. So we are calling them, so this is nothing but dpdx at naught, this is nothing but dpdx at east, and then this is nothing but dpdx at the eastern face, okay? So going back from the finite difference form to the derivative form, just so that we can write these things compactly and we can understand what's going on. Okay. Um, there is there's nothing which says that you can't use this. In fact, this is the one you're actually going to use in your code. This one I've written simply to understand this whole thing better. Okay. One of the things you see in this form, in the second form here, is that the volume of the control volume actually shows up as one entity, which you kind of don't see in this equation clearly. Okay. But here you clearly see it. And this all this becomes very useful when you finally um, formulate this for, let's say, an unstructured mesh, because you are going to see volumes show up then. There is no delta x, delta y anymore. Okay. But the important point after all this is, so we, we are basically saying, what is our objective? Our objective is to derive an expression for the velocity at the face, okay? And we are saying we cannot use straightforward linear interpolation or distance-weighted interpolation for that. Now, after having done all this, here is what we get. This first term basically is your distance-weighted interpolation formula. U naught plus U is divided by two. But now notice that that is not the only term in your phase velocity. There are all these additional terms which depend on pressure. And that's the reason it's called pressure-weighted interpolation method, okay? So these are all extra terms involving pressure gradients, essentially. Okay? So my velocity at the phase doesn't depend on cell center velocities on the two adjacent control volumes only, but also on the pressure gradient on the two faces, okay? Notice that this is pressure gradient in node north, node east, and then also across the face. All right? So this is our so-called PUIM formula. So if I, in future lectures, say, okay, you calculate your velocity using the PUIM formula, this is what I'm talking about. All right, the very first iteration, we don't want to use that. We basically want to crack, cross this out because we have started with a guess of pressure and that guess may be a wild guess and all of a sudden you're going to get a wild face velocity because of your wild pressure guess. So the very first outer iteration, we just want to throw that away and just use this much of the formula. In successive iterations, we are actually, once the pressure field has been calculated, we are actually going to use this full formula. Okay? Any questions so far? All right. <clears throat> so, for V velocity, similarly, you're going to get this. Okay, and that's why I was labeling all the equations as 1x, 2x, and so on. Because if you do that for the momentum equation, you'll get 1y, 2y, and so forth. And you will end up with this formula. Okay? And in discrete form, you'll get that. Again, this is the same as uh, what I have on the previous slide for the U velocity. So next step is to derive expressions for velocity corrections, which we still haven't done yet, okay? So how do we correct the velocity? So in this case, we need to correct both cell and phase velocities. And that's another difference with the standard simple algorithm for a staggered mesh. In the simple algorithm for a staggered mesh, we simply had to correct the cell phase velocities or the cell center velocities and the cell center pressures, okay? Uh, but now we have to correct both, and you'll see what happens, okay? So let's start with derivation of the cell center velocities. 
Any questions so far? So how do we typically do that? If you go back to your derivation for the simple algorithm that we did for staggered mesh, all we did was we wrote a hatted velocity with k here and a double hatted velocity with k plus one here. We are following the same steps, nothing different, okay? And then we subtract the two, that gives us our velocity correction in the outer loop, okay? Same steps, no, no difference. Only thing is, as, you, as I mentioned earlier, you get this factor of two because now you have, you're spanning, your pressure gradient is actually calculation is spanning two cells, west to east. There's a knot in between, okay? So it's spanning two, two control volumes, essentially, okay? So this is your U naught, and just like we did earlier, we are going to throw away that term in simple. Remember, we threw away that term in simple. In simple C, we made a modification so that we throw away a slightly different looking term. But in simple, this is the term we threw, threw away, and we said that, well, that's because these guys go to zero at convergence, so we can throw them away. It's not going to alter the solution, okay? So therefore, our formula for velocity correction at the cell centers become these. This is, if you go back to your notes from lecture nine or 10, you will see that for a staggered mesh, everything is identical except instead of west and east here, you will have not and west, and instead of, a, there will be no delta two in the denominator. Because in that case, the gradient is spanning just one cell the finite difference approximation of the gradient, okay? Here, it's spanning two cells, so you have west to east or south to north, which is basically two cells, and therefore you have a two delta x or delta y show up. And of course, one of the delta x's or delta y's cancel out from, okay? But it's, it's the identically, it's the same formula as what we have for a staggered mesh, pretty much, conceptually at least, no difference, all right? Next step is to derive correction equations for the phase velocities, okay? To do this, we follow the same steps as cell center velocity. So we say, okay, we are going to have a hatted phase velocity, which we'll use. Now, the reason we need to do this is because now our phase velocities have pressure also. So if the pressure changes, the phase velocities will also correspondingly change, okay? But we cannot, what we cannot do is we cannot say that, okay, we are going to correct the cell center velocities and then just do a distance weighted interpolation to calculate phase velocities. We can't do that, okay? So that's what we're doing here. We are correcting the phase velocities also, just like we do cell center velocities. So here we have K everywhere and here we have K plus one everywhere. We use a double hatted velocity, okay? Again, subtract the two, you get that. You have your pressure corrections show up now, okay? And you can actually simplify further. So what, what I'm, notice that here I have U naught prime and U east prime show up, right? Those we have already derived here, right here, okay? So we can take that, plug it in here in these expressions and simplify further. And once you simplify, do some algebra and simplify, you will find that your U east prime, this is your correction to the eastern phase velocity, correction to the northern phase velocity will become that. So they are also functions of pressure correction, just like your cell center velocities. All right? Everybody with me? Any questions so far? Okay, <clears throat> final step is to derive the pressure correction equation, okay? To do so, we substitute phase velocity correction expressions into continuity. We have already done this again for staggered mesh, okay? Again, the fundamental difference here is that in a staggered mesh, these phase velocities were readily available because they were actually cell center velocities, okay? But here, we cannot do that. We have to actually take these correction expressions that we just derived in the previous slide. So I'm going to take these expressions and plug it in here. Okay, right-hand side has our mass imbalance, just like before. 
So we take those expressions in the previous page, plug it in here for these four guys, okay? And that gives us this. So here is your U East that I wrote down in the previous slide. And then similarly, you have a West, um, North and South. Okay, now one might say, well, how do you calculate your mass imbalance? So again, I'm trying to tie the pieces. This, this guy, these guys here, we already have expressions for them right here. Okay, actually we, let me just go back. I, I summarized them here. Here's your V naught and here's your U east, okay? So those velocities will go into the mass imbalance calculation, all right? So right here. If I rearrange this equation, I can derive my <clears throat> link coefficients for the pressure correction equation now. Okay. And so the link coefficients become that. Again, you will find that the diagonal is the sum of the negative of the off diagonals. Okay. Characteristic of a Poisson equation. So this is again a Poisson equation for pressure correction. No change as for a staggered mesh. Only thing is that because of the fact that now we are using a collocated mesh, these link coefficients are slightly different. You see this sort of averaging of the, of the two terms going on everywhere. Okay. If you go back to your formulas for a staggered mesh, you won't see that. You will just see rho times delta y square, then one over a naught. That's it. That's all you will see, okay? So slightly different formulas, but other than that, pretty much the same as a staggered mesh. So those are the link coefficients for your pressure correction equation. Mass imbalance, same as before. I already told you that we have derived the velocity, uh, the phase velocity expressions already, okay? So finally, final step is you, after you've solved your pressure correction equation, so obviously all of this you're doing because you want to solve the pressure correction equation, okay? Once you've solved that, then you correct your um, pressure and velocity fields, and I've made a note here that you have to correct both cell center and phase velocities, okay? And you have to use linear under relaxation, just like before. The under relaxations have nothing to do with collocated versus staggered. They have to do with the fact that you have made that approximation in simple where you threw away that first term on the right-hand side, remember? It's the same thing. This has to do with the simple algorithm. It has nothing to do with whether you're using collocated mesh or staggered mesh, okay? So you're using under relaxation, same as before, and here again, you're using an under relaxation for velocity, and these are your final expressions for cell center velocity. Similarly, you will use the same under relaxation for phase velocity, okay? And that will become this, okay? Now, of course, once you get to boundaries and things like that, then you have to um, carefully consider these things. For example, if you have an inlet boundary with a fixed velocity, nothing will change, okay? So the phase velocity there will be the boundary condition. You're not going to calculate it, okay? Uh, things of that nature, or if it's a wall, the phase velocity is zero. <clears throat> So all those things will come into play. We'll talk about that in the next class, but I'll just, I'll just spend a few minutes summarizing what we talked about here. So first step in simple is you guess velocities and pressures, okay? Just like you have for a staggered mesh. From that, your next task is to calculate the link coefficients for the momentum equation because you're getting yourself ready to solve the momentum equations, right? To calculate link coefficients, you need phase velocities right away. The very first time you enter the simple algorithm, first outer iteration, you calculate the phase velocities simply by using distance-weighted interpolation because you don't want to use your guess for pressure. It may completely screw up your phase velocities because it's a guess, okay? You don't want the code to diverge right away. 
So you start with a simple linear interpolation, the very first time. What that essentially means is that another way of thinking of it is if I look at, let's say, an expression like this, okay, or it's better to actually look at an alternative form like that, okay, this is my linear weight, linear interpolation formula. All these terms are extra. What that basically means is if you start with a guess of pressure of zero, automatically those terms fall out, right? So, you know, you don't have to use if-else statements if you're starting with a guess of pressure of zero, okay? Because those last few terms will automatically fall out if you're starting with uniform pressure everywhere. Uh, but if you are starting with a pressure distribution, then you should say if k equal to 1, then just use this part, the first part. If k is greater than 1, then you say velocity at the face is equal to whatever velocity I've calculated via linear interpolation plus these terms. Okay? So that's the idea. Okay, so you get your face velocities. All right? Then you have your link coefficients. Once you have your link coefficients, you solve your momentum equations. Once you have your momentum equations, your next task is to get ready to solve the pressure correction equation, okay? Which is, this equation, right? So you need to solve this. Now to solve this, you need to calculate your mass imbalance this guy. So what are you now going to do? You have solved your velocity, um, you've solved your momentum equations to get the u hat v hat, right? This is where you now have to write an additional subroutine or function or procedure, whatever you want to call it, to calculate phase velocities using quim. When you calculated phase velocities for the link coefficients, that was just a preliminary calculation to get things started. Okay? You can even do that outside the loop. This is the real calculation at this point that you're going to do for phase velocities. Okay? Of course, I'll summarize the algorithm later on, but I just want to go over this one time because we need to really go over this multiple times for you to understand what's going on. Okay, so we calculate once we have solved the momentum equations, we have u hat v hat. We use that u hat v hat at the cell centers to calculate the phase velocities using the Puim formula, the full Puim formula. Okay, once we have that, we have a mass imbalance. Okay, then we can solve the pressure correction equation. Once we have the pressure correction solved, we simply <coughs> do this. We correct pressure, we correct cell center velocity, we correct phase velocity, and store each quantity. We are not going to throw this away. We are going to keep this, phase velocities. Okay? Now, normally what people do is they don't, they don't calculate it or they don't store all three velocity components at a phase. They calculate u dot n. This is something you will see when we get to unstructured mesh. Because really what you need is u dot n to calculate your link coefficients. It's the normal mass flux to any phase. You don't need u, v, and w components separately. So they'll just store one quantity, which is u dot n, a scalar quantity. Okay? Not, in fact, they don't even store u dot n. They store rho times u dot n, which is the mass flux. Okay? So here, for example, for your Cartesian mesh, you will find that you need only u velocity on this face and this face. Why? Because the u velocity itself is u dot n. That's why you need it. Okay? I mean, your velocity vector dotted with the i vector is u. Okay? So that's why you need... So for your, for your standard rectangular domain that we are usually using for until now, you will simply need u velocities on this face and that face and v velocities on this face and that face. You don't need any other velocity anywhere. Okay, even though you're calculating everything. All right? So you calculate those velocity or you correct those velocities, both cell center and, and face velocities. Okay? 
and then you're going back to the top of the loop. The top of the loop is where you're recalculating your link coefficients again. And by this time, the phase velocities are already available. You've calculated and stored them. And that's what you're using to calculate your link coefficients the next time. Okay? And then the algorithm just keeps going. So the only extra step really, or two extra steps in for co-located mesh, one is you have to use the PWIM formula to calculate your phase velocities. That's a separate step completely. That was non-existent for a staggered mesh. And then the second is you not only have to correct cell center velocities, you also have to correct face velocities in that last step in this slide, okay? Now one might say, well, that's what's the big deal about that? The big deal about this is this also requires careful consideration of boundary conditions because you see here, if I have a control volume like this, okay, and I want to correct face, so suppose this is a boundary condition, okay? It may be an inlet or an outlet, and I want to calculate the face velocity or correct the face velocity there, I can't use this kind of an expression. I have to carefully think about how do I apply the boundary conditions, and it has to be consistent with the rest of the code as to how I apply the boundary conditions, okay? So this is something I'll talk about in the next class when we talk about boundary conditions, that certain things in your WIM formula as well as your velocity correction expressions will change when you get to the boundaries.